Hello, it's Nell. Thank you for joining me today. I am going to be talking all about a plant that I love, and that is the Dracaena Song of India. So this is all about Dracaena Song of India care and growing tips. So I first became familiar with the Dracaena reflexa. Actually, it was called the, the Pleomaly reflexa. Now it is the Dracaena reflexa. It's a little confusing. When I was in the interior scaping business in Boston and we got that plant in and it wasn't one that was used very often. So I was like, wow, what is that? And the Dracaena reflexa is a darker green. It's um, dark green with like a little lighter green on the center. And there's also one that is similar to this. It's called Song of Jamaica. And it is green with like a yellowish white um, edging. And it's not as vibrant as this chartreuse one, but it's still very pretty. They all are. And I do love chartreuse plants. I love chartreuse foliage. I love chartreuse flowers. So th this one I really like because it's very bright here at the top. But the new growth is um, especially chartreuse and vibrant, but it grows in a slight twisting form too. As you can see, this cane is starting to twist a little bit and this one is. So as it grows, it gets a real curvy, um, interesting shape to it. So for the sake of not going on and on and on, I'm going to keep this uh, video a little bit on the shorter side. I'm just going to touch some of the main care points and then the rest will be in the blog with more details for you. So you can go check that. The link will be down below. And we're going to start with um, how this plant is sold, you know, the sizes. It's most often seen as a smaller plant like this in a six or eight inch plant uh, pot or grow pot, but it's also sold in 10, 12, and 14 inch grow pots. And then when it's, that's when it gets more into the floor plant size. Now mine will eventually get into a floor plant. It, it will grow into a floor plant at, at, at some point, which leads into growth rate. This plant is not a fast grower, I would call it either slow to moderate growing. And especially if you don't have it in enough light, it's going to be even slower growing. Okay, now we're going to start with exposure. And this plant is a moderate or a, a medium to high light plant. Uh, it needs the, it needs the light and the exposure to bring out the coloration in it and also to help it to grow. Uh, just don't have it in any hot windows with any direct sun. High highlight is fine, but not any burning, scorching sun. And if you have it in light that's too low, it's just not going to do well. So just don't, just don't even try it in lower light. Watering. I will tell you how I water mine. I water it th thoroughly and then I wait until it's like half to a quarter of the way dried out and then I will water it again. I don't let this plant dry out completely, but I don't keep it sopping wet either. So you just have to find that, that sort of sweet spot for watering this plant. It depends on you where your climate, depends on your exposure. It depends on the size of the pot. You're going to water up um, a plant in a smaller pot more often than a bigger pot. Um, also, the soil mix it's in also will determine how often you water it. And in the winter time, I back off on the watering. I water it maybe every two weeks. And uh, that's about it on the watering. Not too complicated. Just don't overwater it. I'll zoom on in so you can see the beautiful foliage. Oh, by the way, the plant that looks dead in the back is my bougainvillea Barbara Karst. We've had actually a few evenings below 28 probably, and it got completely hit. So that's, that's what all that dead foliage is about. Anyway, uh, onto temperature with this plant. 
As I say with all house plants, if your house is comfortable for you, it'll be comfortable for your plants. Just be sure and keep it out of any cold drafts or, or conversely away from any heating vents and away from any open doors with cold drafts. Feeding and fertilizing. Okay, I um, feed my plants. If you've followed me at all, you know that I feed my house plants with worm compost and or organic compost. Both of them are organic in the spring. You can also use a balanced house plant fertilizer to feed this in the springtime. And if you feel the need, you can fertilize it again in the summer. But don't over fertilize either because house plants especially are susceptible to, to salt burn and the fertilizers have salt in them. So when it comes to soil and repotting or transplanting, I'm going to do a video and a post on that for this specific plant next a month or April. So stay tuned for that. But just use a very good organic potting soil uh, for this plant. You want to make sure it drains well. I also put compost and uh, some charcoal in when I plant. And in terms of repotting, it does appreciate it because it grows, it grows bigger. The largest I've ever seen one as a house plant is actually about six feet. So you will want to repot it probably every two to three years and go up a pot size. Oh, and I am repotting my uh, Song of India because I don't like the soil mix it's in that much, you know, the grower. I don't know if it's just older mix or if it just wasn't a really good mix. But when I look under here, there are a, a lot of drain holes and I can see the roots there. So I expect this to be doing um, some growing in the spring once it warms up. It is the end of February and today is like 59 degrees in Tucson. It is freezing. <laughs> so well, once it starts to warm up the uh, and the plants are really going to start to grow. But as I said, I, I will be doing a separate video on the repotting process for you. Now in terms of pests, Mine has only gotten a little bit of mealybug and it's just right inside this new growth there. It's only been on one stalk, so it really hasn't been a problem. I just hosed it off in, in the sink and, and got rid of the mealybug that way. But I have done a whole separate post on mealybugs post and video, so I will leave that link for you in, in the blog post. and. Hopefully also down below if I remember to. But this plant is also susceptible to spider mites and scale. Just like a lot of its other Dracaena relatives. So I've done posts on those. So I have you covered in regards to pests. You just want to make sure you catch them as soon as you can. So it doesn't become a problem because they spread really fast. In terms of pets like cats and dogs. This Dracaena, like all the other Dracaenas, is considered to be toxic to cats and dogs. I always consult the ASPCA website for this. And you just have to look and see what it actually does to them. Because just because it says toxic doesn't mean it's going to kill them. So you just want to make sure that you are educated about that. Do your own research and use your own judgment on that. I am very, very lucky. I've got two cats. One just went in the house um, and they do not bother my house plants at all. So for me, it's not an issue. So I'm going to tell you one or two things that are good to know about this plant. The others will be in the blog post. But the first thing is don't be concerned if it loses lower leaves every now and then. It's like a typical Dracaena where as it starts to grow, the lower leaves, it'll lose, you know, the lower leaves. That's how it grows this cane form, either cane or trunk form. So um, that's what you need to know about that. But another thing ab about that is, is you can always uh, propagate it, take end cuttings, maybe about 12 inches or so, and propagate them and then stick them back down in. So if that, if the plant being really stemmy and trunky bothers you, then you can 
do that because they do propagate very easily. And another thing too, which I, I just want to touch on again, two things is this does not like to go dry. So don't let it go dry. On the other hand, don't keep it sopping wet because it will succumb to root rot because the roots need to breathe also. And don't forget about the light. Uh, you might have to move it in the winter time to get more light because this growth will get really spindly and it won't have, have this coloration to it. And if you have it in even low to medium light, it's not going to do as well as if you have it in really good strong light. So those are the points I'm going to cover here. Head over to the blog post, joyousgarden.com, and you can check that out for more details and more information. But you should give this plant a try because it is just gorgeous and it's what I call a jazzy, vibrant plant that'll just lighten up your home. So I hope you have found this video to be helpful. I have a lot more videos coming your way, especially in spring. I'll be getting into gardening, pruning. I have a ton of repotting to do. So stay tuned for those. And if you like gardening videos, houseplants, succulents, bromeliads, all that, all that good stuff, then be sure to subscribe. Hit the button below because I'd love to have you come back. And now let's get out in the garden or into our indoor gardens and make our worlds a more beautiful place. I thank you for all your likes and your subscribes. And I also thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks so much. Bye.